Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Sick Days. I just want to say thank you to everyone who's been giving me a lot of thumbs up on the last recording of Sick Days with Jose. I really appreciate all that stuff. I have another one with Chris being our next episode, but I decided at every end of the month I'm going to do a solo episode, and the first one's right now. I'm going to be talking about something that's been going on with me for a good while, and that's been bothering me a lot, but um, thank you again, everyone. We don't have a sponsor. Head over to clubdistribution.com slash LBS if you want to support. You can get a skateboard or a t-shirt over there. And maybe if anybody wants a Sick Days t-shirt, let me know. I will get them made if people really want them. I got some design ideas I could do. But um, thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to follow us on everything and enjoy this episode. All right. So my identity has been stolen and now I have warrants under my name. Yeah. Yeah that can happen it's really freaking dumb uh a lot of you guys who don't know me probably don't know what's going on but my close friends who have been with me for a minute they understand that i've been dealing with this court case about identity theft on me and it's crazy it's so dumb like i'm gonna start from the beginning for you guys just so you can get a better feel for the story but this isn't how to deal with it this is just my experience with identity theft and i never thought something like this would happen to me in such an odd way so if anyone's experiencing the same thing i am very sorry this is happening to you i know how annoying it is and i hope you get through it but let's carry on with the story and i'm just gonna give some background in 2023 i had to close down my skate shop which really sucked and for those of you that know me well you know i had to pay some taxes and i gotta get out of debt or i had to get out of debt i'm still kind of in it but it kind of made life really difficult being the sole income earner in the household, paying rent, groceries, all that kind of crazy stuff. But that kind of already sucked, right? Let's say 2023 starts with closing your store and you got to find a job to make ends meet. In my case, I had to have two jobs to make ends meet. So I've been hustling over and over and over again every month to barely make it. I've had tons of support from friends to help me and they totally understand why I haven't been able to hang out with them or why I haven't been visiting a lot because I visit my friends all the time. But knowing the situation, you'd probably be really exhausted like I was. And by the end of the year, it looked like I was starting to get out of it. I was so excited. I felt like some freedom again. And then I was looking for another job. And when I was doing this, I was also doing Instacart's as my secondary job it's the easiest one i can do where i can turn it off turn it on get my job done get some extra cash get in my bank account same day which really helped between paychecks because i know a lot of people experience this where they're living paycheck to paycheck which sucks i don't enjoy that this is the first year where i've had to be like that consistently and it's just like demotivating i hate having to budget extremely i mean i hate extreme budgeting that's a better way to do it but I had to do it to make sure I had enough funds at the end of the month or between paychecks to buy food or to get gas for my job. So doing that, um, I had an email that was sent to me by Instacart's um, third party background checker and it said that I have failed my background check or that these warrants under my name. And I thought it was a scam because um, The warrants were set to like last year or two years ago and um, the warrant said possession of narcotics and drugs, trespassing and refusal to leave property and endangering the public. Which is something I would never do. Um, Maybe I smoked weed every once in a while. Yes, that is true. But I've never had like narcotics on me. I would never trespass someone's house and I would never endanger the public. So I thought this was some sort of scam to click on the link or whatever, so I ignored it. And um, at the same time, I was applying for a new job, like I said, that paid a little more and had me use my car less because my current job has me drive a lot. They reimburse me for my mileage, but it's kind of hard to make it through the week sometimes when you have to wait for your paycheck to get that reimbursement. So um, I ignored it, continued doing my Instacarts. And then around December 1st, I think was around the time uh, I had an interview lined up for this job as well that I was applying for. And it looked like I was going to get it. And Instacart tells me, 
hey, you did not pass your background check. And I was like, so this isn't a scam. The app turned off on me and said, you cannot continue working. So I asked for a dispute and they said, yes, it came back again with these warrants under your name. And I was so confused and I was like distraught by it because again, that was like one of my secondary income income sources that I really needed. So I called the police department from the county that had those warrants out and I give them my name I'm like, hey, this is who I am. Um, I just did a background check and it says these warrants are under my name. Is this true? They look it up and they're like, yeah, you got these warrants under your name. And I'm like, oh, crap. What do I do? And so they connected me with an officer who made one of the arrests for those warrants. And it was really odd because they kind of told me what happened, but not really. They said, hey, were you at this casino? And I was like, no, I don't go to the casino. I used to go when I was younger to go eat food with friends, but I have not been there in like three to four years. And they had me send over a photo of myself and a photo of my D, and the officer told me, yeah, this matches. So I was super confused. I had a, They asked me, like, do you know anyone who would steal your identity? Do you know if you lost your ID? And I believe I haven't lost my ID. I checked my closet where my ID, old IDs are, and they're both right there. So I don't know how this person got a hold of it, but I just know it wasn't me. And the officer told me, um, Chances are I'm not going to go to jail, but I might have to pay for these warrants or felony or misdemeanors is what they were. And that doesn't sound so bad, but I can't afford that. The misdemeanors are like a thousand dollars a piece or something like that. And on top of that, that stuff stays on my record. I couldn't do Instacart. I still can't. And I lost the opportunity to do this job. And it would, I got really lucky that my current job doesn't have these flagged in their system because if they did I would not be able to do my current job which put which would put me in a horrible situation so I got really lucky in that sense but I still had to miss out on job opportunities and I would miss out on future job opportunities if they popped up with this on my record so um, they said I should provide evidence that I wasn't there the night of the casino incident which I thought was the only incident that was happening, but I found out later that it wasn't. Um, I was chilling in a hot tub for a minute, just thinking, pondering. Luckily, this apartment complex has a hot tub where I can just think and clear my head, which is what I really needed at that time. And I decided to call the casino because in my head, I was like, wait, if this person got kicked out of the casino, the casino would probably take a photo of them to make sure they could never back come back in because they are very, very strict. I'm making sure they won't let people they don't like back in. And so I call the casino and they take me, they transfer me to their security area and I talk to the security manager and I was like, hey, do you guys have security footage of blah, 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 blah. And they said, we might. And I gave them the date and then they said, hold on just a moment. And I was on hold for a while. And when they came back, they told me, we will not be able to give you any of that footage. I'm like, even if it's me, you're like, yes, even if it's you, we would first have to go through this court of commissions and then we have to ask the police and the police would have to verify and say, yes, you can get this information. And I understand that. But the thing that frustrated me about frustrated me about that situation was when I was talking to the officers, they kind of gave me the sense of like, they're not even going to try. They filed a report for identity theft, but they told me some information about their situ about the case where the gentleman they or whoever it is when they went over to figure out that whole casino situation they had the license plate m number that the person's car or they had the license plate number of the person's vehicle that he was in and they tracked back that address but they kind of decided and they told me we can look further into this, but most likely it's not going to be an accurate address anyway, so it's not worth it. And I get that. But in the in my situation, if I was an officer, I personally would have checked into, with that, into that. But I don't know what it's like. Maybe they were right. But just like being in a situation where like I'm trying to figure this out as soon as possible, I did not feel any sense of urgency. But I understand if there's cutbacks or something like that in the police force, 
making it to where my case is not as important, which I totally understand. There's crazier things going on, but I just happen to be in a situation where I needed this figured out. So that kind of like ruined my, de my December and I had to call the court, the superior court, which I had to go to. And they said they could get me in to testify a month from when I called, which is like, dude, I need this now. Like, but I had to wait a whole month to get ready to go to court. And that day comes, I go to court eight in the morning. I have to miss work which has been most of these times. I have to miss work for all these situations, the, all these court dates that I've had to go to, which sucks. Luckily, I have sick pay right now, but before I didn't. And so I had to miss two to three days. And it, again, my situation was pretty like, I need this money. So missing those days really affected me pretty badly. So I get to court and I ask for an attorney because I don't have the funds. And they assign me an attorney and I have to come back to court two weeks later. During that time, I tried to contact my attorney. I didn't get a response for like those two weeks, which is like weird because I was like, dude, I need to know my court date. They didn't tell me my court date when I went. So they, they assigned me a court date initially, and then they said, be back next time with your attorney. And they gave me the attorney's number, but they didn't give me a court date to come back. And they said, just talk to your attorney. And I called my attorney like two to three times, and he did not answer until I called the website number that was on his law firm. He answered that two days before my court date and I was like hey I've been trying to call and I was like let me see it's like oh yeah I got your calls right here which is like what I understand if you're busy but you already know my two calls were there and I left mes messages saying how concerned I am and like what I really need done and it really felt like it was just like air in the wind like he didn't really didn't really care but again, I get if he was really busy, it was around the holiday time, but at least give me a response back, you know, like five minute phone call. That's really all it was when he, when he, con when I contacted him and he answered, it was just a five minute phone call. And he was like, let me see what I can do. Almost like if I was bothering him to call, but that's just my side of it. I don't know how he felt. And so let's fast forward two more weeks later, right? It's my court date. I'm really hoping it's done. It's over with. And when I get there. Oh, I'm sorry, I jumbled this up. No. <laughs> the day before my court date, my attorney calls me back, and he leaves me a voicemail because I was working. He says, due to some situations and names in the case, he cannot defend me. So I had to get a new attorney. And in my head, I'm like, dude, what do you mean? Like, who is in this case besides me? Who are you defending? Who, who else is in this case where you cannot defend me? And so that kind of stressed me out. But they, I went to court the next day, and what they did, they assigned me a new attorney. And they said, come back two weeks later. So my case is delayed even more. And again, I felt like in the court, like I was just a number. And being there, I realized how like the judicial system tries to work in a bulk load and I understand there's a lot of court cases all the time but it really feels like that's the only way they're able to navigate through this like a number system and it was just weird but the interesting that happened the first time I went uh, <laughs> I went with my mom she went to support me and there's this guy who was already incarcerated that he that was talking for his case and he was behind a glass window and he only spoke Spanish and he had a translator right it was kind of funny, but kind of like, oh, man, this sucks. He started screaming that his identity was stolen and he knows it wasn't him and that everyone in the court knows it wasn't him and someone in the system is involved with it. And I was like, oh, my God, dude, like, that's the exact thing I'm worried about. Am I going to go to jail? Am I going to be yelling across the window saying it wasn't me? It wasn't me. And that kind of freaked me out, but also kind of funny ironically but anyway I don't know what happened to that guy haven't checked in hope he's okay if he did do the things he did he kind of deserved what he got but again fast forward two weeks later with my new attorney I call him he responds so much faster than my last one he provides me the information that the police did not 
provide me with, which is insane to me. I thought it was only one thing that this guy did, but apparently he got in trouble three times using my ID. Once at the casino, once at a recycling center, and once at a homeless shelter. Not a homeless shelter, a homeless camp. And this attorney was asking me really good questions about how do I look? Do I know these places? Where are they located? What's my current address? Just things that were like essential that the police could even ask me if they were bothering to investigate the situation, but they didn't. And I was like stoked. I just need to get some letters of recommendation. I just need some photos of me from the past year to make sure I don't look like that guy that was on the description. But I was just kind of frustrated with the police that they did not bother to tell me these other things. They didn't really give me clear dates on anything. And it's almost like they just, again, didn't care. So I don't know what was going on there. But when I went to court the next time with my new attorney, turns out he was sick. And he gave me a side attorney, like a backup guy. And the backup guy had no clue what was going on. And he was like, i sorry, I can't do anything for you right now. We're going to delay this case. So now I have to go back in another two weeks. Which again, is just frustrating. Because I'm trying really hard here to work with them. And the system is just going really, really, really slow for me. And I have the warrants off my name now. But my charges are still pending. And in California, those will still show up in background checks even if I did not do it. So that's my current situation. I'm totally hoping that in two weeks when I go in again, that I won't have those warrants in my name anymore, but I don't know. I mean, I know I don't have the warrants, the charges, but I just simply don't know. And that's been frustrating me because I've been trying to do a lot of different things and not having that extra source of income is really delaying a lot. But that's kind of, that's it's a blessing in disguise, I want to say, because I've been having that free time that I haven't had in a while, and I decided to start doing the podcast. I decided to start recording more things, and so, in a sense, I'm kind of, dare I say, glad this happened, because it kind of made me refocus my goals again, because I felt like I was just like in a, a weird swamp of like, what do I do and who, 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 where am I? Where am I mentally, you know? But I'm not letting this, like, drag me down. Uh, if anything, again, it's just a good story. But it really felt like the police system and the judicial system have a giant disconnect with the public, which is one thing I've, I've, I've always noticed. But to be in it, it's kind of weird you realize how much they go in their algorithm of things and it just like the experience is not great not great at all like if you have a DUI and you go in there it's pretty freaking fast but if it's a hiccup on their part it's super slow because three times probably three different officers saw whoever this man was and looked at his ID which was mine I don't even know how he got a copy of that ID. But they looked at that ID and looked at that homeless man, supposedly, and thought these people look the same enough. And in my ID, I have long hair, right? So maybe I do look a little homeless in there. I was was working in the sun all day when I had my ID photo. But the address that that gentleman gave him was not even an actual address. So when the court dates were sent out, they weren't even sent out to the right address. They weren't sent to me where I could have been like, hey, this wasn't me. I'd like to report identity theft. They were sent to some random address. And because of this guy who's still out there, they never arrested the man. He's still out there. He just like set my life backwards. And I understand he's probably going through a lot. But to take someone's ID and use that as a scapegoat for yourself, that sucks, dude. Especially because he doesn't know I have a daughter. He doesn't know I try to provide. So, whatever he's doing, man, I hope you're okay. And I hope this gets done quick, and I hope I can get back to my regular life. But I just wanted to tell you guys about this, because 
been something I wanted to talk about, and I don't really get to talk about it to too many people. So you guys are the audience for that. Just want to say thank you. Um, but I don't want to end it on a negative note. Just want to say, again, really, I love you guys for listening, and thank you to everyone who's been following the podcast. And just like, I can see where people are listening from, so it's good to see a variety of places and um, people following and supporting. I just want to say thank you, and uh, um, I hope you're having a good sick day, and I hope everyone does what they want to do with their life and doesn't let anything bring them down. But, yeah, I'll catch you guys later. Don't forget to follow. Thank you for listening to my rant. Um, Yeah, love you guys. Peace.